Today we're looking at this, which is powered up by this, which has this on top of it, but you can also use this, or you can use this, or if you want, you can even use this if you truly desired. This new EG4 Mini Split only runs about $1,300 and is powered by a 110-120 source or strictly DC only. I bought this to power it strictly from my RV, which is totally cool because it's kind of like a mobile power plant. With the amount of solar that I have on board and the battery system that I'm going to be upgrading soon, It'll strictly be able to power this when I have the RV parked on the side of my house. If you happen to have a utility trailer, construction trailer, or an RV, you can easily make a solar system out of it and there's no permits required. Now these are super easy to install, which is nice because this is great for the DIY person. Now, if you're a little bit new with electrical and more, you will want to get like an electrician. Also check your local codes. As far as install, this literally took about maybe two hours after I kind of went through the instructions, did a little bit of pre-research, and from the time I drilled my first hole to the time I turned it on, it was pretty much a two hour, and then I just had to clean up some of the outside piping and more, which I was kind of undecided where I wanted to put it. Still have a little bit left on the installation because I was still trimming it out. You can see the trim kit that I added. This I actually picked up on Amazon. They're just a line cover set. I'll put some links down below to show you the one that I used. I still have to get another one that goes across the bottom here and I need a little bit more insulation for the exposed copper pipe that I have over here on the side. But overall, this is actually really easy to install. It's not very heavy, it weighs about 100 pounds. And I also added these rubber isolators down here. This is actually not lifted up enough. Again, I have to get some risers and a couple things just to kind of finish the install. But I didn't want to permanently mount it because I actually had to paint my house soon and that's probably gonna be a next spring type of thing so I didn't want it permanently mounted on the ground yet. But these little rubber isolators will also help take some of the vibrations out and just make it run a little bit quieter depending on how you have it mounted. Like if you put it on a racking system that is actually on your house, that might help dampen a little bit of the sound from it, even though this runs super quiet. There's hardly any noise that comes out of this. Now mini splits are a great way to save power and heat and cool your home. The wiring is pretty simple because the control cable is all numbered one, two, three, four. The mounting bracket is a single bracket that will come with screws and anchors. There is one hole that you'll have to drill that is about 2.5 inches. Now taping up the insulation will help this push through the hole. That way it'll go through the other side of the wall. And this is where you may want some help. But after that, hanging on the bracket is really easy. It clips right down, pushes against the wall, snaps into place. And that is virtually it, as this only weighs about 35 pounds. Now one thing that's nice about this one is that the lines are pre-charged. You simply take off the caps, there will be one Allen screw inside each one, and then you'll simply open this up until the screw goes all the way to the little stop ring. So you'll hear the line start to charge. And then you just open it until it stops on the ring, and that is simply it. And you'll do the same thing to the bottom one, and once you're finished, then you can go ahead and put on the protective caps again, and now the system is virtually ready to run. You will have four of these little keepers, which two on the bottom here and two on your upper connection, which sometimes a little persuasion is handy. Now the hardest part of the job will be maneuvering your copper wires, which you do not want to kink. The AC wiring is actually pretty easy if you're familiar with it. The control cable again is just plugging in one, two, three, four, and your DC solar input is also pre-wired. Now I've been plugging this into the side of my RV right here, but since I'm showing you how much power this actually uses, I put a little meter in here, that way we could take a look at it. Okay, this is around 10.30 in the morning, it's about 85 degrees using 560 watts and about 4.7 amps. Okay, it's about 105 degrees now and now the unit's in direct sun. Okay, now you can see we're using 1070 watts and the unit is powered up on turbo mode max cooling and this is the most I've ever seen it draws, right about 9 to 9.1 amps. Now when I'm using the solar on the ground, this is about 1200 watts, but I will leave some links down below so you guys can see some cheap options for solar panels. Now these four solar panels are giving me right around 144 volts open circuit. And now that it's plugged into the mini split, you can see the solar panels are giving us about 8 amps, which is just fine for this unit to run just on solar.
So this is really a look at my RV system. I have 1,340 watts coming in, and this is enough to run the mini split and also charge up my extra batteries. As you can see, they're still charging right now, but since it's in pass-through, the solar is actually running the mini split. This is with the mini split running off of the solar panels that are on the ground. And you can also get historical data. So the orange would be AC power, but then when it switches to green, this is when it's purely running off the solar panels only, and you can go and look back at data from days, months, or years. Now I've been using this for a few days, again, just strictly powered off of my RV. So even when you see those numbers as far as on the app, which the app control is really cool, even though you see the orange and the green, that's all from the RV. I haven't plugged this into my house at all. So it's kind of cool, again, that I can power this off of something that's just sitting here in my yard. So when the RV leaves, I'm not here. And then when I park the RV back on the side of my house, um, it's just there providing power for me. Now that's not gonna work out for everybody, but even then, this is still a great unit that keeps my garage cool. You can use this for a small house. You can use this to cool one of your rooms and save a ton of power. And if you have an existing solar system, you can even add a small separate system. If it's not grid tied, you could do a straight DC system and just to power up this. It doesn't take much, it's super simple. So other than that, I hope you guys liked the video. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments and I hope to see you guys next time.